Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Spiritual Superpowers. I'm Dawn and this is Karen. And we have a great Spiritual Superpowers replay for you today. So enjoy. <laughs> okay, my story. <laughs> Um, all right, I have always been into supernatural and paranormal since I was really young. And I started meditating at the age of 12. Wow, okay, this video was made almost three years ago, and it was just at the beginning of Spiritual Superpowers. And I had just made some huge life changes. We were in the very beginning of the pandemic. And I wanted to share my story as Karen did another episode as well. And now we're watching it back. And so much has happened since I recorded this video. Um, but enjoy the early years. When I was you know, 13 to 16, I got into pendulums and tarot cards. And then... When I was 18, I went for a psychic reading to a psychic fair, had a psychic reading, and they had told me that I do have abilities. So I actually went home and I told my mom about about it and, and some of the things that I've experienced myself, you know, dreams coming true or thinking something's going to happen and then it actually does, knowing what someone's going to say before they even say it, that type of thing, a lot of deja vu. So my mom listened and then told me that that's nice, but to not talk about it, right. <laughs> not tell a lot of people yeah. about it because I look and sound crazy, I guess. Um, it's not really what my family believes in. They, they kind of were cool with me playing in dabbling in that world, but it was just more as, as a hobby. Um, they didn't actually believe it to be true. So um, when I mentioned anything about psychic anything, they, they wanted me to nip it and just not talk about it with anyone. Uh, so I didn't, I kept it quiet, kept kind of having my own interests, um, continuing learning tarot and uh, learning a lot about the chakras. And then when I went off to college, kept it up, but being in school for massage therapy, we do also cross into a lot of energy work. And I thought based on those topics in holistic health and uh, some of the conversations I'd had with classmates, I thought, oh great, these are my people, I can bring it up again. So I was actually at a study session and mentioned to some of my classmates that I was studying with that there was a being in the corner, a, a large man and um, from the look on their face, <laughs> <laughs> I should have followed my mom's advice and just not talked about it because again, I was playing that crazy card. And so how long ago was that? That was, I would have been in my, I would have been probably 20. I was okay, in college. So, yeah. yeah. I was really young. So I, based on everyone's reactions, I just, I, I realized that it's not something that is well received and I'm just best to keep my mouth shut. I kind of did it in secrecy. Um, kind of got away from it in my mid twenties. As you know, you got started with life, you know, buying a house, getting married, career. Um, I still continue to meditate. Uh, but one thing that was really cool was with my hands-on practice as a massage therapist, I found that I could really pick up on a lot of, I guess, messages from, from the bodies that I was working on. Now, I did think that all massage therapists could do this, but it was really cool to see it develop in that I, I was fortunate enough to have a really successful business and practice right off the bat, and that was because I not only followed the protocols that I was taught in school, but then also if I got an inkling to work somewhere, I would add that into the treatment and it seemed to really do the trick and get people better faster. Just kept listening to their bodies and I started to receive more and more messages, you know, whether it was uh, someone's name and I mentioned it to the client and sure enough, it was, you know, their mother had passed. Um, food sensitivities, or, um, deficiencies, um, anything like that, I could sense and communicate that with the patient. So um, explain a little bit more about how you felt those communications. So at the time, I would either hear the words or I would get a picture or I would get a feeling. 
especially if I was doing the, the deep tissue, deeper tissue work, I could really feel what the client was feeling pain wise. I could just see it in my mind's eye. And now I know that those are the different types of clairs. Yeah. So clairvoyant, being able to see, um, sentient, sensing, cognizant, knowing, um, clairaudient, hearing. So I always had access to all the clairs. And so I would receive that information in a, in a multitude of different ways. And it was, it was different with each patient and each treatment. Yeah, so I, I just paid more attention to it, learned to listen more. Uh, and uh, found that the more I listened, the more I allowed the tissue to guide me, the the more information I received, and and then we got into um, taking some courses, and that just kind of propelled it all forward. Uh, Marianne was wonderful at teaching us how to harness the the clairs and and uh, use mediumship, and I I threw that into my hands-on practice, and it just allowed me to not only listen to the body and the tissue and what the, the body wanted, but also um, what their energy field was saying. You know, if there were loved ones, I could call them in for advice. So I, it became this whole um, toolbox of uh, access in multiple different realms to be able to help one person. Unfortunately, um, in the recent years, I've burnt out. So I actually had to take some time away. So you talked about courses with Mary Ann. Mm -hmm. So explain that a little bit, what that was all about. Uh, the first course I took was, uh, or that we took was soul coaching. And honestly, I highly recommend soul coaching. It's like 20 years of therapy in six weeks. That was mind blowing, especially about learning how we might have soul contracts or our soul journey or purpose for being here. And it might always, it might not always um, match up with what the shoulds are in our lives. So it just gave me a, like the bigger picture and what, um, what maybe my calling is versus the, what I should be doing, you know? And then we got it, I got into mediumship or we got into mediumship and that allowed us to um, blend with uh, loved ones or, or spirits who have crossed, like develop a vocabulary with them to be able to communicate that to either a sitter who, is, who uh, we're speaking to, or in my case, it was the, the bodies that I was working on. And so all the, the ways that you can kind of find the, the radio station and be able to connect on that level and be able to listen and receive the information. So the, uh, we took a ton of courses over the last few years and it has been extremely beneficial, I mean, which then has led to me, and I can say us, um, understanding that it's not just about the messages that you're receiving or being able to communicate with the other side, it's actually about taking that information and applying it into earth school, like applying it into what we're doing here and listening to those signs, following the path and doing what is in our highest and best. So essentially we're helping others using these skills, mm -hmm. but we're also helping ourselves. Exactly. And I, I believe that the more you help yourself, the more you do what's in your highest and best, it's in everyone's highest and best. Right, and, and that's really the purpose of this YouTube channel, mm -hmm. isn't it? It is. Uh, we want to take what we've learned and demonstrate what we've benefited from and put it out to you guys so that you can benefit as well. And then we also, you know, it hasn't been easy. It has not been easy. We've had to make a lot of really tough decisions that are in our best interests. Um, so there's a lot of resistance there and, and that I think is one thing that holds people back a lot of the time. So w since we've been through it, if we can show how making those decisions to do the really difficult things um, have paid off, then it might give um, others a little bit more incentive to follow their heart and do what's best for them. Okay, so now that you're out of the spiritual closet, so to mm -hmm. speak, how has that been received by people around you, whether it's clients or friends or family? You know, it's getting better. It certainly has not been 
easy. Um, I did close my practice. I left my marriage all because of the signs that I was receiving from the universe that it was in my best interest to take some time away from myself um, and leave everything that was no longer serving me behind. Um, so the, it was really hard to hurt people that way. But once I made those decisions and I just really focused on me and what my body needs, um, things started to fall into place and people came around. Um, my parents are a little bit more inquisitive sometimes. It depends on, I guess, when you catch them. <laughs> uh, they have watched the Ghosts of Dufferin County episodes. Um, oh. My parents more than have come around. Um, my parents have seen every episode of Spiritual Superpowers. They started having not so much, some odd questions here and there, but actual conversations. And it's been really nice to um for them to be so open and understanding and welcoming of spiritual superpowers and my abilities as a psychic medium or psychic investigator and i definitely have their full support now which is amazing uh, my mom right up until the day she passed last year was possibly my number one fan and i know my dad, brother, and I have um, appreciated all the signs and ways that my mom has been communicating with us. And I think that a lot of their... And I think a lot of their openness came from them watching uh, the Ghosts of Dufferin County episodes, as I mentioned, as well as our episodes here on Spiritual Superpowers. So giving it time, letting wounds heal, and again, staying in my alignment has uh, really helped everyone kind of come full circle and things are great. Other parts, other members of my family have been quite fascinated with it and have actually reached out to me to, to kind of ask for more information on that. And in the spring, I kind of sent out a confessional email, to, I guess, to my patients explaining what has come of my journey the last year and how I just don't feel like I could go back to being just a massage therapist. I really needed to listen to um, my calling, and that is to focus, I guess, more on the medical intuitive side, using massage therapy, using Reiki, acupuncture, cranial psychotherapy, using all of those techniques, but treating according to what the, the change that the body wants me to facilitate, not just based on what the client is coming in with. Um, I certainly listen to what the client wants, but if there's something else that might benefit them, it could make all the difference and that's the way that I'm now treating patients and it's actually been really it's been well received um, my clients actually come in now want to know what I'm doing before I would you know talk to them in a very massage medical way now they come in they want to hear is there someone in the room with me um, what is their body saying you know they'll even ask me to ask the body other questions all questions that we know deep down inside we know the answers it's just so we just don't usually trust our instincts, so we'll often play games with pendulums or asking the cranial sacral rhythm on um, on what's in their best interest for questions that they have or whatever treatment that we're we're focusing on that day. So it's been it's been pretty well received, and it's just it's getting better. The more I follow, you know, my gut and my heart, the easier things get. And I think that's the main message that we want to share with everyone, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's to trust, trust your gut, follow your heart, get out of your own way, and uh, and it all ends up working out. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video with me. It was fun to kind of look back and see how much has changed over the last few years. 
and you'll want to stay tuned for a follow-up episode. Both Karen and I are going to make, um, I guess, part two of our spiritual journeys because there has been a lot of changes over the last three years. So stay tuned for those videos. Thank you again for watching. Please remember to subscribe and we will see you again next week. Bye.